How's it guys? Welcome to the next installment of the, uh, the Eyes Higher Home uh, Learning Journey Project. Uh, here today we've got Alosha. Uh, Alosha runs a, 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 an initiative called BioVida uh, and a big element of it is abundance of water and how to use water and manage water uh, within your system and make your home a like cyclical a, process. Like an ecosystem. An ecosystem in yeah. itself. Yeah. So uh, uh, Alosha is having a look at, at how some ideas of how we might do that here. So yeah. So we've got a really tricky site. I mean, we're talking. Uh, we're standing right now on a gradient th this steep. Okay. So Devon's got some quotes for gabions, which is big uh, blocks of rocks that are mounted into the earth. But my suggestion is that I believe that those rocks are going to create a heat sink, and they're going to, in summer, radiate heat back in and create like a, a trapped pocket of really hot air. So instead of that, I'm suggesting on the slope to dig a little trench. And to create a, a snake like a snake like a sandbag that will come up to here and where and then we backfill it straight to the mountain or we have another little sandbag there just a short one so you have a terrace with fruit trees growing out okay and then here the sandbag will be up to up to this point just two meters that way I'm suggesting to create another sandbag and build it up tall and the reason that it's going to stand, and I know it's going to stand, is because of the snaky, it's a self-supporting structure. So unlike a straight wall, which will just fall over, this thing is a snake. So it will self-support itself. And there, we're planning to have a 25,000 liter water tank. And below Devon's house, which is where those rocks and all those trees, we're suggesting a little bean-shaped wetland with a few of uh, temporary smaller wetlands that will go out to the servitude um, to the stairs and that will treat all of the gray water from entire house and send that water back up here to irrigate the fruit trees and the rest of the garden and possibly have a header tank somewhere here that will have water going back towards your toilet so your toilets will be flushed with treated gray water and your entire garden will be irrigated with drip under mulch so little pipes going to every fruit tree okay so you're not irrigating the mountain you're just irrigating what you've planted there so that's my recommendation for for this side extremely tricky but very doable very exciting project actually looking forward to getting my teeth stuck in here <laughs> what i love about the concept and what what which of life's principles <laughs> <laughs> that it's really, that it's really uh, um, fulfilling is it's being resource efficient and that's one of life's principles here uh, creating that cycle is, is quite an important one so very much looking forward to see what happens um you know what your first step is i'd say is just to start clearing the sites a little bit eh? yeah and uh a biomimicry learning journey so okay. through the learning journey, basically, you're trying to um, discover the process of ecological thinking as much as possible. So this is exactly what we're doing here. Mm. Exactly what we're doing here. So this whole project could be a really nice way to, you know, because we're ecologic, because, you know, a standard way would be to stick a box here, put some gabions, create a heat sink, stick in an air conditioning unit that you'll need for your heating, you'll be baking, so you'll need that, and sewage out, water in, and then when the water runs out in Cape Town, you like, you stick dry, you know what I mean? Exactly. What I'm trying to propose to you is a self-sustaining eco-machine earth ship. You know earth ship does, it's just tires and mm. stuff. But, but yeah. not this whole huge box, like a, like a beautiful design. Of it. You want to go to the car, I'll show you. I'll show you some pictures, maybe even email you a quick picture that you can, or you can take on the phone. Yeah. You can show your architect. We, we don't even need an architect, he'll just sign it off and he will sign it off. That's all we need an architect for. The architectural cost will be ridiculously low. I'll come and build this dome right here myself. With the, I'll get a team and I'll build it from so start Lasha, to finish. Hang on a second. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. I want to incorporate all those elements. Yeah. But there, there, there are restrictions here. I just I want you to want pop to in. No, no, I'm not getting my like, hopes oh, up. I just want you to I've swing it past municipalities. I've already paid to architect to design this thing, and okay. she's consulted with Heritage Council, and she's come back. Okay. We've gone back and forth. Been like, what can but we do? just check with your do? architect. The plans are in already. Okay. Like, it's not okay. gonna. I'm, I don't want to. Okay, fair enough. I don't want to just completely get. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you have paid already a lot of money for that. So. Yeah. Okay. 
So then we just work around your... It's not just about the money, it's the fact that we've explored a lot of what our options are. Yeah. And options are, it has to look like this, it has to have the picture, it has to look like it's made out of brick. And so that's why I'm going with my favorite framework, because you can cut it with something that looks like okay. brick and mortar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Got it. So we've, we've explored okay, a lot. Okay, so, so, so then let's just do the wetland there, okay? And we can still capture the water coming off the roof. We can still build the place there. Yeah. So I'm going to look at the position. How far back is your house from? Uh, it'll be about. Okay. Okay. So, so, so we have on this side, let's say, um, come center. You can see there's a little bit of a press down, like a pathway. Yeah, yeah, I can see this. Okay. okay yeah. So, so something that's running there. And we go up to about on this pathway. On a pathway to that height, okay. And, okay. and how far to that peg? Yeah. Okay? yeah. So where that peg is on the top of this bank. We'll probably come back. We'll probably have another <laughs> sandbag here, okay. And that will be your 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 tank. That will be your deck to have margaritas. And and it will have water storage, okay. But the looks of it could be like a like a fifteen twenty thousand liter number, not too wide. Talking from here, two meters, two meters, and we run it right across to the end of your property. And that water could be used for with a biochar filter, which I also teach them for water, you know, construction for you. Um, you'll have that water super clean. For drinking and bathing, oh, really? and then and then your roof comes your pipe down pipe from the gut instead of going down and out yeah. slants into the tank. Nice proper leaf catcher, uh, so no gun going out. The tank will build with a carrot. We need it vertical, hey? Okay. Um, horizontal. Sorry. <laughs> we'll have a flush out valve. To blast out the muck, so it's an easy maintenance. You don't have to come in and clean because all the other tanks are going your knees and clean them out. It starts to settle. You also have a floor that comes like this, and then a valve, and then the pipe for your biochar filter. So for usage, it's going to be slightly higher. That water can, you know what I mean, it doesn't pick up on a sediment. So the sediment settles, it can be easily blasted out with a fat biochar filter. You've got a, a pump, with a, like a, a bulb sits in. And as soon as you open any taps in your house, it takes water from there and goes and pressurizes all your taps. So you have a backup. Should Cape Town like cut off, you got water. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so so, so this tank kind of ends here. That there's your platform. Okay. And now here, this guy could be building up a bit higher. Okay. And then we just do a thin sandbag right on top of your property. Like this height. Yeah? It's also like a wave. And then from this guy, it gets backfilled with good soil. Yeah. So from there. Yeah? Yeah. And you've got this lack of soil that runs right across. And then that's where your little trees are, you need a little privacy, you know? Could also be a nice little chair you can put up, but you've got a nice deck here as well. So you've got a terrace, but you've got a terrace that's usable. Yeah. Instead of gabions, you've got a 20,000 liters of water. And instead of gabions here, you've got a planting bed. Terrace that's going to be a good composted soil, cardboard to separate you from the sand, full tooth. And these guys, I mean, I'm doing donations all the time, so it's probably used by those no, no, no. You, you want to plant, you, you want to plant like food growing stuff. So this is not a walking area. It's not a deck. So you'd probably put a little little fence here just to demarcate. Just a small fence like, okay, this is a planting area. And you've got your herbs and veggies here. Or more like your fruit trees. Because herbs and veggies are going to be taken. Yeah. Fruit trees. I definitely I love bananas. And bananas we'll put on the bottom, we'll stick them in your grey water. What we'll do is we'll take 
We'll take your kitchen water. Through a simple grease trap, that box that I showed. You separate the fats and little pieces, like 300 rand, one of two. And then that water gets sent to a pit. And then the pit is lined with like cardboard and a whole bunch of this woody stuff chucked in there. And then you plant the bananas around it. Your kitchen water just goes in. Yeah. You can also take their kitchen water and just send it in there. Because it needs a lot of water. Yeah, and, and the, the kitchen water is full of good nutrients that the bananas are just going to pump. Yeah. So you need to check on your climate what will work. Alright, well, Paris, this is a good concept. Awesome. We'll keep you posted.